but Dan and Pete, you guys touched on earlier about how men don't talk about mental health so often. Um, so why do you think it isn't spoken about? Why do you think it is a taboo topic in today's society? I don't mind starting with that one because this is a subject <laughs> that I feel very passionate about. Yeah. Um, I think, so I, I grew up in sort of um, not a happy home, not the best environment. And I grew up in a house where kind of like, if you hurt yourself, you got told to man up, um, sort yourself out like a girl. Um, if I was crying, it was like, stop crying, that's what girls do. Um, and I think a lot of a lot of that has impacted me over the years in terms of if I have said that I'm struggling with how I'm feeling, it's kind of like, oh, you'll be fine, get over it. Like, oh, man up. Man up is the one phrase that I hate. Um because I don't think men should be manning up. They should be opening up instead. Um, sort of, and you look at the sort of figures and the statistics around men's mental health, and sort of there is a large number of suicides amongst men to do with their mental health because they don't get the support or the help that they need because they don't know how to talk about it. Society is very much kind of like, you know, men need to be strong. And I think that dates back to like when we were cavemen, like it was the <laughs> men that were going out and doing the hunting. And it's it's all very medieval sexist stereotypes. But mm. I do believe that, yeah, men kind of a lot of men are told, yeah, just man up, just get over it. You'll be fine. Or like have a beer and you'll be, you'll feel fine. But you don't. As I mentioned, I've, yeah, I've struggled with my mental health on and off since. 2012 and it is something that it's taken me a long time to accept that I may not get better that uh, because there is no magical magical cure um obviously there's medications that you can take and there's counseling and there's other forms of support out there but I think for me I've kind of got to a place now in my life where I just have to accept that maybe I'm just going to struggle with certain things at certain times and that's okay like it's okay for me to have a bad day and not want to get out of bed but as long as I recognize that and I'm able to verbalize to somebody be it a friend a family member one of my colleagues if I was in school I would talk to a teacher and just to say I'm really struggling today and just talking about it I think that is sort of words are our most powerful weapon um so yeah, and I just think I just think there is a lot more that we as a society should be doing to support men to open up about their mental health. And it doesn't just have to be depression, it can be anxiety or stress. It's little things like that which start off as such a small part, but then they grow and they become bigger until it becomes unmanageable. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I think. Thank you for sharing, Dan. Oh, thanks, Dan. I can I, I can agree with uh, all that you say, my friend. Like, um, I think why do I think men's mental health is such a taboo in society? Um, I think for me personally, I would have to say from my experience, it's been angled from a cultural point of view. So I've grown up from I grew up in Africa, then and and then I came to the UK, and uh, but then I don't think I knew what mental health or what qualifies as mental health in my culture. I think. It doesn't exist. Um, I'm not sure if, but then, the, you know, witchcraft and all that kind of malarkey. But um, but I, for me, culture is what shaped my views around mental health. Um, from there, it was then probably learned and experienced through uni and environment, the environment I was in with my friends. And um, I was that kind of individual who was kind of didn't know what mental health was or just didn't consider myself to be, to have mental health. Um, which is different to now where I believe everyone has mental health in them. Um, it's just a matter of the spectrum at the end of, of uh, the, the spectrum at which you're at. And I think in men, we're just much uh, been built up, like Dan said, cavemen, we are we are the hunters. We can't be seen to be showing emotions. You know what I mean? Like like we need to keep that strong face for society for for that is what we have been shaped to be. Um, and I think on a on a funny side, I think it's just more like also I think it's just, it's a funny onlook that I kind of put it in terms of 
when in dating in in dating people girls say oh they want guys that are good listeners and i'm like okay are you saying we're good listeners so we don't need to talk like from that sense does that mean we don't need to talk or are you are you saying you're asking for a guy who just listens like do you not want to listen to us kind of thing like i'm sure that's not how it is but in in terms of little society cues that have um have kind of made this such a taboo t topic for society those are the kind of little cues that i see going on out that have kind of cemented the nail in the coffin in terms of do you accept it or do you let it snowball out of control and later um that's how we kind of see these enormous numbers or unseen numbers of men um of men's mental health just going through the roof so um so yeah i think there's definitely a lot we can do to debug society's taboo that makes men seem to be like we can't talk and just must listen because we also would like someone to listen to us as well because like dan said sometimes that's all it takes to understand um the topic uh, wider um if that makes sense yeah not in. good that actually thank you what about you sonia kind of coming in coming from it from a different point of view well, yeah, why you do you think men taboo is such a, <laughs> such a, why do you think men's mental health is such a taboo subject well personally i think um it mainly comes to do with how you say about it's from a stereotypical point of view i mean who said men don't have problems who said that they don't go through difficulties so it's like i think people think that you know from the stereotypical point of view that women they deal with mostly with emotions and everything and men like you're saying that you know they're the breadwinners or you know they're much stronger but actually that's why they don't think that men have mental health issues it's because they're like it's more of like reconnecting with your emotions is you're trying to get in touch with your emotions to get better and they associate that with women more as compared to men so that's why i think they're like try to brush it off especially from a culture point of view so i really agree with what you're saying pete um because i've heard a lot and even i've met some people as well who don't know what to do when their children are experiencing mental health difficulties i mean when we did a race presentation once i think it was for um maybury um yeah. there were so many Pakistani women there and they were telling us about how their children are going through certain things as well they don't know how to deal with it and they kind of don't know what to do because it's their sons who are going through it and they were mentioning it to us how they would brush it off or try to stand strong or they wouldn't even talk about it at all just because okay. they might think they might get teased or bullied or made fun of especially with their friends but um yeah from a culture point of view I just think it doesn't exist mental health and that's why yeah. it's not spoken about you know they're like oh be a man you know brush it off it's okay stand strong and then they don't give enough importance to it as compared to it as if a woman was experiencing it so yeah. it's just validating it that's really important for a person i think because it helps to get through it better as well mm. so thanks Sonia. what about you sarah i don't i don't know if i can touch on much more than what's been said really to be fair but um I don't understand how it has become a taboo subject because we obviously are soldiers and things like that that go fight our wars and see awful things and everything else. They always come back with mental health and they always struggle with things and everything else. And it's just like, well, it can happen and it will happen. It's obviously it's totally different circumstances to an, an everyday um, person. Um, to obviously our soldiers because our soldiers go through a lot more and, and things like that and with the PTSD and, and certain things like that and, and whatever obviously that's less taboo than Joe Bloggs who got works in an office and things like yeah. that so I, I think there's definitely two sides to the men's mental health situation it's absolutely all right for us to support our soldiers and our men of war and even the women um, and things like that that have gone off and come back and seen terrible things we support them it's great like they've done a fantastic job we'll give them everything but joe bloggs who works in the office yeah. struggles and it's just like ah man up get over yeah. it you, you haven't gone through much and things like that and it's not mm. just because you have to go through something <clears throat> just to have mental health um and things like that i mean uh robin williams absolutely yeah. fantastic guy we lost him because he had mental health he had depression and because it was such a taboo subject and everything else i don't think he could talk about it and things built up and unfortunately 
it basically killed him and things like that. So I definitely think it needs to be more widely dealt with. Yeah. Um, and definitely brought up in more cultures um, and things like that. Because my uncle is now um, he he um, became a Muslim quite a few years ago and things like that. And how he lives in Singapore, he's married, he's got kids and everything else and whatever. But but in that culture, it's the men that have to be tough, and it's the men that support the women and things like that. And obviously, if one day you have a breakdown you are considered weak, you could be sort of shunned upon and things like that. And I don't think it's fair. Yeah. You've touched on some really good points there, Sarah, particularly around sort of like the military, because sort of thinking back to when we did history at school, sort of, again, like you said, sort of people in the mil- men in the military, particularly back then, we're talking World War One and World War II, yeah. um, they would have seen horrible things, but they didn't recognise PTSD back then it was shell shock that's what they used to call it and sort of the way that people were treated with that sort of we're talking 70 years ago yeah it wasn't great sort of you would be sort of horrible things would happen if you came back with shell shock and I definitely think like you said it's only kind of a recent thing in terms of actually we we support people that have been through significant events and maybe suffering with PTSD um, but I don't think there's enough support because PTSD doesn't have to be that you fought in a war or you you know sort of something the worst case scenario happened it could be as something as simple as sort of you've been in a horrible relationship and then you're suffering with PTSD after that and again I think it is that society point of view that we just we just don't like to talk about it we're not very good at talking about our feelings and then with Robin Williams as well I think I would love to see more visible people in the media sort of who are openly talking about sort of mental health and depression and anxiety and other sort of illnesses that are related to it because I think if more people were visibly talking about it, that would, may help other people to open up about it because they're seeing their idols or their role models being open and talking about their feelings. Yeah. And then that might help them to open up. So that was really, really helpful. Thank you, guys. 